So Blender version 4.3 was just released, and in the update they've done some big changes to Blender's sculpting brushes. So they've added some new sculpting brushes, they've also changed all the sculpting brush thumbnails, and all of the brushes are now assets in Blender. So this way you can create your own custom brushes and add them as assets in the brushes panel. So in this video I'm going to show you how to create your own brushes in Blender. Now if you haven't watched my other video which I just released going over the new updates with the new brushes, definitely check out that video linked in the description. Now now I'm also going to have a free download of all of these five brushes that I'll be creating in this video, so you can download them for free on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page as an asset library. So if you just want to download them for free, then you can just install them how you normally would in Blender's user preferences as an asset library, and then you can sculpt with my custom brushes. And if you're enjoying my videos and you'd like to help support me and this channel, then you can just add a few dollars into the price box on Gumroad before purchasing, that's a great way to help support this channel. Or if you'd like to download for free, you can just punch in zero into the price box and download for free. Now for following along with this tutorial, make sure you're using Blender version 4.3 or a future version because if you're using a version earlier than 4.3, you won't be able to follow along with this video. Now I'm going to show you how to create a variety of different sculpting brushes and one thing that we're going to do is add an external texture. So I'm going to be downloading this Rock 050 from AmbientCG.com and I'm going to download the 4K JPEG version and we'll be using the displacement map as a sculpting brush to create a custom rock brush so you can sculpt different rocks. So the first thing that we need to do is create a new asset library for our sculpting brushes. So let's click here on edit and we'll go to Blender's user preferences. And then we're going to click here on the file paths and you can open up the asset libraries. Now I've added in a bunch of my own asset libraries, but I'm going to now click on this button here to create a new asset library. And this will bring up Blender's file browser. So I'm now going to go to my file browser and make a new folder for my asset library. So here's the folder on my computer with all of my different asset libraries. I'm just storing them in a place where I can keep them long term. So I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this custom sculpting brushes. So this is where I'm going to store the data for the brushes. So then back in Blender I'm going to go to the folder with my asset libraries. I'll go into the custom sculpting brushes and then click on add asset library and then make sure to click on the save preferences unless the auto save is turned on and that way it'll auto save the preferences. So I'll now close the user preferences. So what I'm going to do is just delete everything and I'm going to go to the add menu and just to preview the sculpting brushes as we're creating them I'm I'm going to add an icosphere and then right here on the icosphere settings I'm going to turn this really high up to like a 7 so it's pretty detailed and then I'll shade the object smooth. So I'm just using this so that we can preview our sculpting brushes so I can actually try sculpting them and demo them on this object. So let's now go over to Blender's sculpt mode. Now one other important thing to mention is that I'm going to be using these different asset thumbnails that I've created and I'll be adding them as custom thumbnails to my assets. And how I created these thumbnails is I first made the sculpting brushes and then I sculpted sculpted them on an icosphere, and then I set the camera pointing at the icosphere, and I just screenshotted the file with the brush sculpted on the icosphere. So if you want to create your own custom thumbnails you can, or if you download the free project files on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, you can get these five asset thumbnail images which you can add to your custom brushes. So now let's create our first custom brush. So I like to use the draw brush as the default brush just because they're very simple brush. So I'm going to select the draw brush here. Now I'm going to duplicate the brush. So to do that, I'm going to click on this little drop down arrow right here and I'm going to click on duplicate asset. So now you can see these settings appear and I can make the name of the brush. So we're first going to be creating the dots brush. So we're going to have it so that when we paint, there's just going to be some little dots with spaces in between. So I'm going to call this dots. Now here on the library, you can see this is showing me all the different asset libraries that I've added into my Blender file. So I made my own custom sculpting brushes, that's why we did this at the starting of the video. So I'm going to choose my custom sculpting brushes. And then right here we have a catalog, and this catalog is actually going to be what's right down here. So you don't have to add any catalog if you want to, you can just keep it at the default. However, I want to make my own tab here, which is going to have my own custom brushes. So I'm going to click on the X here to get rid of this catalog, and then I'll click here to make a new catalog. Then I'm going to type custom. So once I've typed custom, I need to hit the enter key and the enter key is going to add this as a new catalog. Now I'm going to click on save. So now that I've done that, you can see there's this new custom brush. Now if I click and drag to make this bigger, because we have all selected, you can see right down here, here is our dots brush. So on the all category, our brush is going to be there. But if you click over here on custom, here is our custom brush. So now what I need to do is add the custom thumbnail. So I'm going to click on this drop down arrow again, and I can click on edit preview in. Image. 
much. Now here are all the custom thumbnails which I've created and again you can download them for free with the link in the description if you want to. So what I'm going to do is copy all of these images so I'll just copy them. Then I'll locate to my folder with my asset libraries and you don't have to stick them in the asset library if you don't want to it really doesn't matter but just to keep things nicely organized I'm going to go into my custom sculpting brushes and you can see here in the blender file it's made this blender assets.cats file. This is just the data that blender needs to organize the different brushes. So we'll close this. You can also see that there's this saved one here. So if I go inside this, there's brushes. Here is the dots one that we just created. So again, don't move this around, just leave it where it is. I'm now gonna make a new folder here and I'm just gonna call this thumbnails. I'm now gonna go into the folder and just paste our thumbnails. So then back in Blender's file browser, we're gonna to locate to the same place where I'm storing the assets. I'm gonna go into the thumbnails and I'm gonna choose the dots brush. And now you can see that it's been added as a custom image. So now what we need to do is just change all the settings. So this brush is going to be pretty easy to change. What I'm going to do is just go down here to the stroke and then here on the spacing, I'm going to change this to 150. So now I can just make my brush bigger and I can just try this out and you can see as I draw it's making those little dots and that's really it of course if you're creating your own custom brushes you can change so many settings you can change like the hardness of the brush the normal radius there's also like this auto smooth this cool auto smooth feature so you can do whatever you want but this is what I'm going to do for this cool dots brush so after you're done with the brush settings it's really important to save the brush settings because you can see right here it says unsave changes you need to click on this drop down and then you need to click on save changes to assets and just to make sure this is completely working, you can open up a brand new Blender file. You can jump over to Sculpting, and then if you click on the drop down here, I need to click on Custom so I can see the custom libraries. Click here to go to that tab, and there we go, we have our custom brush. And if I just turn on the Dine Topo, I can now sculpt with our custom brush. So we now have a custom brush, which is gonna be in every Blender file. So let's now create the second brush, which is a noise brush. So let's click back here on All, and then I'm gonna go back to the Draw Brush, just because I think that's a nice brush to duplicate, because it has some very basic settings. So again, we're gonna click on this dropdown, we're gonna click on Duplicate Asset, and this one I'm gonna call Noise. Then here on the library, I'm gonna add it in my Custom Sculpting Brushes, and then here on the catalog, let's click here, and I'm gonna choose Custom, so it adds it to my own Custom tab, and click on Save. So now if I go here to Custom, we now have a Noise Brush. Let's now add the Custom Thumbnail, so I'll click on the dropdown, and again, we're gonna click on Edit Preview Image. You can locate to the folder with your thumbnails. I'm gonna select this noise brush and click on load preview image. So now to add the noise, we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna open up the texture. Let's click on new to add a new texture. And then we can click on this button here, which will go to the texturing panel. We can now change the type here from image or movie. So I'm gonna change it to clouds instead. And clouds is basically the same as Blender's procedural noise texture. So I can go back up here to the tool settings. Let's make the brush a bit bigger, maybe make it a bit stronger. And now if I start to go along here, you can see we have that noise brush. Now, one other thing which I think is really useful is if I scroll down here underneath the texture, I like changing the mapping to random instead. And this way when I paint, it's gonna be much more random and I just like that a bit better. Now, again, it's very important to go up here. You can see it says unsave changes. So you wanna click on the dropdown and you wanna click on save changes to asset. And that way it'll make sure it saves it. So when you open a new file, you'll have this noise brush. Let's do the next one. So I'm gonna click back here on all, and I'm gonna click on the draw brush, and we're gonna click on the drop down here, and we're gonna duplicate this asset. And the next one is gonna be a rock brush. So we're gonna be adding in a rock texture. So I'll choose rock. We're gonna save it in the same library. And here on the catalog, we'll delete this catalog and we're gonna choose our custom catalog and click on save. Now, if I go here to custom, we have our new rock brush. So I'm now gonna click on the drop down, and let's click on edit preview image. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. So just select the rock image and load the image. Let's now scroll down and we're gonna add a texture. So click on new to add a new texture. We're going to click on this button to go to the texturing panel and then we're going to set it to image or movie. Let's now click on open to open up a texture. So here in the same folder with my assets, you don't have to put it here, but I'm going to put it here just because it makes sense and it keeps everything organized. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this textures. Then I'll go inside the texturing folder and I'm going to paste in the displacement map. So when you download this rock texture from ambient CG, you'll need to extract the zip file. And if you go into the extracted folder, you're going to have the color map and the normal map 
and the roughness map and some more maps, but you want to make sure you use the displacement map. The other maps aren't going to work so well for sculpting brushes. The displacement map is the one that you want, and why the displacement map works is because the black and white data is going to tell it to push in the mesh or pop out the mesh. So now if you go back into Blender, you just want to locate to wherever you've downloaded the texture, and I can click on Open Image. So there's the texture. Let's go back up here to the tool settings, and let's scroll down here, and I'm going to go to the stroke settings, and on the stroke method, it's set to space right now. So if it's set to space, if I just try to sculpt this, you can see it's like really repetitive. What I'm going to do is change the stroke method to anchored, and this way I can click and drag and I can pull out the rock texture. So that's really cool. I can easily sculpt some rocks. So if you want to sculpt like your own custom rock assets, or maybe sculpt like a cave scene or something, you could do that just by dragging out this texture. And of course, you could add your own rock textures. You could add like a bunch of different rock textures. So you have a lot of variation. And of course, really important at the very end, click on the drop down. And then of course, you want to click on save changes to asset. I'm going to be making two more brushes in this video. So let's create a line brush. So I'll go here to all. Let's click on the draw brush, click on the drop down. We're going to duplicate the asset. I'll call this line custom sculpting brushes, and we're going to add it in the custom catalog. We'll save this. So if I go to custom, here's our line brush. Let's click on the drop down, and we're going to add the preview. Here's the line brush preview that I've made. So I'll just load preview image. Now for the line brush, I'm going to scroll down here to the stroke. And here on the stroke method, I'm going to change this instead to line. Now you can see if I click and draw, you can see we're going to have a cool line brush. I can also turn the strength up so you can kind of see that better. So let's click on the drop down, and we're going to click on save changes to asset. Let's do the last one. So we'll go to all. I'm going to choose the draw brush. That's what I want for the base brush. We'll click on the drop down. We're going to duplicate the asset. And this one I'm going to call Voronoi. And again, on the catalog, we're going to choose the custom and save that. So now we have our own Voronoi brush. Let's now click on the drop down and add the preview. And here's the thumbnail that I've created. So I'll select this and load the now for the Voronoi, I'm going to go down here to the textures, click on new, and we'll click here to go to the texturing panel. And instead of image or movie, I'm going to change it to the Voronoi. Now, of course, if you want to, you can change a bunch of settings like the intensity and the size. And there's just a bunch of different settings you can play around with, but I'm just going to be using the default Voronoi. So if I go back to the tool settings, let's make our brush bigger. And again, with this one, if I go along here, it's kind of just repeating itself. So instead, I'm going to scroll down here to the stroke method, and I'm going to change this to anchor. Now, if I just click and drag this out, you can see you can make a really cool Voronoi texture. You could also hold down the control key. And then if you go here with the control key, it's going to invert it. So you can get some really cool results with this. So again, just click on the drop down and save changes to asset. So if I open up a new blender scene, I can just go here to sculpting. I can click on this drop down here and choose custom. And there we go. I now have all my custom brushes. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I hope you found it useful. And again, if you'd like to download these free sculpting brushes as an asset library, you can download them for free with the links in the description. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel, you can throw a few dollars into the price box on Gumroad before purchasing, and that's a great way to help support this channel. You can also help support the channel monthly by joining one of my Patreon memberships. So when you join one of my Patreon memberships, as well as supporting the channel each month, you'll get access to lots of Blender content like 3D models and other tutorial files and lots more Blender content. So I hope you found the video helpful, and thank you for watching.